before we proceed, I'd uh, like to your corporation to turn off your mic. And the chat is always on if you have questions along the course of this uh, forum, you can always uh, post your question there. Uh, this is more or less a framework of what we are going to cover. We are going to talk about assessment guides from various uh, government bodies, a few types of assessment, alternative assessment, and I think we have some friends who do some creative work quietly. Perhaps um, they can share with us what they have done uh, before our Q&A, and we will end this with a Q&A. Okay, I think everybody has read this. Uh, this is a circular or the guide from uh, the Ministry of Higher Education uh, saying that we can continue our semester, second semester, as early as 27 April to 1st of June. <clears throat> but as we know, in UMS, because of Kaamatan Festival, uh, we will start our session on the 9th of June. <clears throat> and this change is considering these few factors, especially the access of the students, uh, whereabouts of the students, and also the preparedness of universities to conduct whatever method that we can uh, we can conduct with. Uh, following that guide, UMS has uh, um, decided on the change in the academic calendar for this semester, and, and we will start 9th of June. Uh, meanwhile, while waiting for 9th of June, a lot of people are asking, what can we do now? There are many more weeks before that. Uh, we, we have also, our Deputy VC has already uh, advised lecturers that they can use their own uh, wisdom to uh, discuss with their lecturers on what is the best medium to reach the students. And for assessment, we can use continual assessment to replace some of the uh, conventional assessment that we have planned earlier. And we have to look into constructive alignment of outcomes teaching and learning activities and assessment. Uh, we, if you, you may like to see what other universities are doing, uh, for example, University Malaya, this is from Daily Express this morning. Lessons and exams to go on starting 27th of April. And this is their plan for the whole, so to continue with the semester. And this is what USM is doing. Again, they also they look into uh, alternative methods of measuring and also delivering the curriculum. On 27, uh, 29th of March, MQA uh, gave us a very important uh, guide on how we should deal with teaching and learning and assessment in this uh, period of time. Uh, first, we can use alternative methods to replace face-to-face -face, uh, method. Uh, remote learning methods for assessment and also for teaching learning is allowed. For practical component, we, ca we can use uh, video virtual simulation and other methods. And of all these, we have to make sure that the learning outcomes are attained. Uh, this is another very important guide. We, we are allowed to, we are considered to have done our uh, teaching and learning and also assessment if we can cover at least 70% to 80% of SLT requirements, that's the student learning time requirement. And uh, in fact, we, our 
director of quality had a discussion with MQA uh, recently. Uh, this means that we do not have to fulfill 100% as long as uh, this is covered. And the threshold of every CLO is attained. The minimum requirement of every CLO must be attained. Uh, another issue is this percentage refers to activities done by students, not percentage of CLO. I hope this is clear. Okay, next we will uh, talk about assessment for learning, assessment as learning, assessment of learning, so that we, we know how to cope uh, with the present situation and make use of one of these methods in our assessment work. Uh, for this, I'd like the Dr. Dennis to continue. Dr. Dennis, over to you. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, what actually, uh, thank you, Prof. Vincent. Uh, before I start, I would like to say something about the COVID-19. Uh, we thought in uh, our industrial revolution, the technology will be the most important disruptor. But in fact, we can see here now uh, the virus uh, it's more or oh, it's stronger this uh, disruptor than the technology so actually the technology is playing more uh, role in uh, enabling us to face this kind of matter now so we talk about uh, approaches of assessment um, There are three. Uh, actually, we have to look back uh, what is meant by teaching or in education. In every course, we have these uh, learning outcomes. We put a lot of focus on um, what the students should attend or should mm. achieve. And the other thing that we always um, uh, try to decide is what kind, of, what kind of learning activities that we want here. So. In between uh, learning activities and also learning outcome, we also have to determine what is assessment. And as we can see here, assessment um, in between learning outcomes and also learning activities. In other way, we can see that assessment is actually have two focus, which is focusing on the learning outcome and as well focusing on the learning activities so um, we can see here assessment is trying to is a bridge between these two the learning activities and also how we can say the learning activities have helped students to achieve learning outcomes so in a way assessment is uh, playing two roles here to assist on the learning activities and also to determine to what extent that student have achieved uh, the learning outcomes so we can see uh, there are three functions here for assessment for the first one we always look at assessment of learning and then this is looking at um, we relate assessment as a something to do with the end product while there are two things here which is actually looking at the process which is assessment for learning, which is we look at um, the effectiveness of our teaching and learning environment to promote learning. And also the other part is you can see assessment as part of learning. So there are three approaches here, not necessarily isolated to each other, but there are three things that uh, integrated, uh, working together to promote students' learning. So we can look at this uh, short uh, the acronym. We have AOL, Assessment of Learning, and then we have Assessment for Learning. 
and we have AAL assessment as part of learning, as learning. So how these three things are different or the, these three assessment uh, working differently? Okay, first thing is AOL is actually more on measuring the learning outcomes. We, most of us, we do this a lot of things. And AFL, assessment for learning, we try to understand how students are, we try to monitor the students' learning, what the progress that students have learned in a session. And AAL, uh, assessment as learning, so we look at this part as, we try to help students uh, to understand what and how they should learn something. So they try to understand the, the, the students, what they expected to achieve there. So all three assessments are actually collecting data, collecting information. For AOL is actually collecting uh, to what extent the students have achieved the, uh, the goals and standards. While AFL, they try to gain information uh, to what way or how we can improve our teaching and learning so that the students will learn better. While AAL students collect their own data of their learning, what, to what extent they have learned, uh, the, how, what is the best way for them to learn. So that is AAL. Then you can see here, usually AOL is usually formal assessment. We can relate this to final exam uh, quizzes and so on. While AFL, usually we can see that is informal as well also uh, formal assessment. AL is usually informal. It can be done by the student himself or herself or their, their colleague or their peers. So basically, AOL is to verify learning. AFL is to, uh, to promote learning. And AL is a part of learning. Assessments as part of learning. And then you can see AOL usually is summative at the end of something, at the end of topic, at the end of semester or the middle of semester. Formative for AFL is usually during lesson or in the process of lesson or in the process of teaching and learning. And this is same way with uh, AL. So basically the methods for AOL, final exam with term, term with semester test. For AFL, the, usually we have some short quizzes. There's, for example, here three minutes paper. Maybe we want them to write a writ, uh, written assignment and so on. Well, AL usually can be made through reflective journal, portfolio, and so on. So this is part what kind of uh, information that we're going to collect or we can collect from three different assessment. So usually in AOL, we have grades, marks, and so on. And for AFL, uh, usually we can give students in qualitative feedbacks, constructive com comments, and so on. For assessment as learning, we look at the students' own reflective comments and <coughs> also portfolio. So how these three are related, they are all based on to improve learning. We cannot say we can only pick one of this and we can disregard AFL and AL. Or we can on or we want to say we can only use this part, but we don't want to do this too. So we cannot in teaching and learning we have to take all three, but with balance. So that we can improve learning and also uh, we can have some information about the students uh, progress. What, to what extent they have learned and so on. Someone, yeah. So I think that's uh, wrap up what is the three different uh, yeah. <laughs> AOL, AFL, and AAL. I think that's all for me for these three type of <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, prof. Thank you, Dr.
New Zealand, can you please mute your phone? Thank you. Thanks again, Dr. Dennis. Uh, before I proceed, uh, I look at the number. There are 70 over people joining this. This is very encouraging. I'd like to congratulate all of you for your love in carrying out your work. You see, in in uh, general uh, pattern in UMS, we don't get so many number when it comes to face-to-face -to -face, uh, forums or seminar or IDP programs. Hmm. So it's good good to see that so many of you are uh, here. It shows that we all, all of us have uh, interest, have passion in what doing what we are doing. So that's very good. We should uh, sustain this motivation. Next, I will continue with the uh, alternative assessment. Alternative assessment can be seen uh, in two different contexts. When we talk about alternative, alternative for what? In good time, generally, alternative education refers to the eight types of alternative assessment uh, suggested or recommended by the ministry. I will I'll elaborate that later. Uh, this is more systematic and systemic in that uh, there is a system of uh, activities and channels to do things. Uh, but at this time, we also need to look at this kind of alternative assessment. Uh, which is at this time, everybody is looking at, uh, now I haven't done this, I haven't done that. We have only done five weeks. What can we do to cover up what we haven't done? So this is uh, assessment alternative to the methods what we are doing usually. So we will continue with these two methods, uh, these two uh, types of alternative assessment. For a good time, Alternative assessment is part of higher education 4.0. It recommended by the Ministry of Higher Education. Now, this is on top of other things like uh, teaching and learning, delivery, fluid and organic curriculum, redesigning higher education, and so on. And this book, this uh, all these are uh, given in detail in this book which will be shared to, uh, to, with you later after this uh, forum. Last week, uh, there was a seminar conducted by Prof. Fauzia Abdurrahim of UUM. Uh, the recording of that seminar is available in, in the YouTube, uh, for which I have also given the link uh, at the end of this slides. Uh, Prof. Fauzia talked about the elements, when we talk about alternative assessment, what, what must we consider? First, it must be performance-based, must be authentic. Authentic meaning that what we are measuring is the real thing and not, not proxy. Now, example, exam is a proxy. Exam test papers are proxies because Performing in test papers or performing an exam doesn't mean that they can perform in real life. So assessment, alternative assessment must be authentic, must be measuring the real thing. It must involve portfolios uh, for which e-portfolio is more relevant now. There must be some evidence in terms of writing samples. The task must be open-ended. There must be many ways of doing. There must be many solutions. And there must be self-assessment and peer assessment. Uh, this is uh, another slide shared by Prof. Alzia. Steps when doing alternative assessment. First, we identify the outcomes which are 
which are available at the, our CLO123. Then we think of interesting alternative ways of assessing. We must also think of those who are disadvantaged. We must remember that we have to cover everybody's uh, ability. And for as for any other things, we must look into reliability and validity of our assessment. We have to think about what are we going to attain at the, at the end of the assessment. And then we merge our assessment uh, they aim with the instruction with our teaching and learning activities. The book uh, on higher education 4.0 recommended eight different types of alternative assessment. I'll go through one by one. Our first authentic assessment, I have mentioned this earlier, the what we measure must be authentic must be related to real life, must be related to workplace. So this is basically uh, authentic assessment. I will do this very quickly because uh, we have a few more things to cover. Uh, the second type is called performance-based assessment uh, in which the actual performance of the student is given priority in terms of application in real life work. The third type is called personalized assessment. Uh, for this, we can uh, plan personalized or custom-made assessment tasks for individual students, depending on the context. Integrated assessment involves assessment of a few disciplines together. For example, I teach assessment in education, uh, Dr. Dennis, Dr. Dennis teaches chemistry. So we can have a common assessment uh, task, example, uh, to build a chemistry test paper. So I can assess the CLO related to testing and assessment. Dr. Dennis can measure the chemistry content. This is integrated assessment. Contemporary assessment. Again, real life problem, learner-centered integrated skills emphasize on the process and open-ended. Number seven, challenge-based assessment. This is a special kind of problem-based learning, problem-based assessment, uh, but the problem is a challenge which we develop for students to, to solve. Number eight, profiling assessment. For this, we do uh, profile, student profile, and we assess on their based on their profile. Uh, there are a lot of other literature regarding the alternative assessment. Uh, I will provide this in the links uh, at the end of this slide. Okay, the next uh, area of alternative assessment is perhaps, perhaps what we need now. Assess alternative assessment for bad time or for desperate time, uh, which is uh, about how we can change or adjust our assessment to fulfill what is required for the remaining uh, weeks in this semester. For this, I'd like to in invite uh, Dr. Dennis to, to share his experience uh, in his course. Dr. Dennis. Okay, thank you, Prof. Can you see my PowerPoint? Or? Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, to emphasize again about what is being uh, explained by Prof. Vincent on the alternative assessment. Uh, if you we look at that, what is been mentioned about alternative assessment, we are actually uh, looking at these two. <laughs> type of assessment which is assessment for learning and also assessment as learning so this is actually the alternative assessment which is actually being been explained or being emphasized by the ministry because nowadays we are too much of doing uh, 
assessment of learning. So basically, we are doing uh, a lot of, we are moving away from uh, too much emphasis on AOL, but we are doing more on AFL than, and also AAL. But now we understand what is the alternative assessment that we actually talking about when we say about alternative assessment is actually mean by uh, assessment other than the conventional uh, assessment. But now uh, it's more like um, we are trying to deal with the current situation. So we have to rely a lot of other uh, alternative assessment now. So before we can um, <coughs> To redesign our assessment, there are a few uh, basic principles that we need to uh, look back before we want to change our assessment for this time. Okay, the first of all is uh, the constructive alignment. We need to make sure whatever we uh, redesign our assessment and also how we re, re plan our learning activities, it should uh, meet with what we want the student to achieve at the end of the course later on. So basically, we must uh, still need to look at constructive alignment, which is also mean that we need to make sure the assessment is valid and our learning activities is valid uh, according to the learning outcomes that we want. Um, therefore, we should also make sure that we're not uh, assessing uh, irrelevant skill, which is out of the learning outcome that we want. So for that, we need to make sure to to be able to make sure the assessment is liable and also valid. We need to have multiple assessment methods. Um, we cannot just change one assessment into another form of alternative assessment. We are it is much better we can combine two or more different type of assessment so that we can see uh, we can have a more valid uh, result from that assessment later on. And also we need to this time uh, we need to think also our practical uh, how practical that our assessment going to be. It, whether we need to think whether we have we can use synchronous or asynchronous assessment. If synchronous, we have to make sure that the student have uh, enough bandwidth and speed, and they they are they can access our materials later on. Uh, and then, what kind of resources that we can provide to them? Uh, some resources may not be able to be uh, provided online. So we need to think of that, and yeah, this is the basic three uh, principles that we need to uh, to to consider in redesigning the assessment. There are four, there are more that is that are uh, being explained in the USM assessment guideline. I think Provinzen will give the the link or give the 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 guidelines by USM later on. So here there are a few examples. So these are various assessment that we can do for what is conventional assessment, which is usually face-to-face. -face. We've done this very well already. Uh, final exam, midterm test, topical written test, and so on. And then we have this at as alternative assessment. So basically, we have done this with the presentation, uh, demonstration of the students, whatever they want to do, and then we make observation. We can do three minutes paper. We can have observation checklist or laboratory work, maybe also oral examination. So this is alternative assessment, which is we have to be, we have to conduct it face to face. Uh, now we have to think of this one for MCO condition. Because we have no way to do a face to face. This is the online environment. There are few, uh, there are still a lot of uh, means to do the assessment. We can do online assessment, video, live video presentation, if we have the bandwidth. This is synchronous. We may uh, introduce 
um, uh, online group discussion as we're doing now. So online oral examination, one to one, uh, with the students. Uh, maybe online live performance. Maybe we can get a few students to perform their their arts and so on, but they have to do that <laughs> uh, on their own. Or maybe live debates. They can we can have debates uh, through live video. But if bandwidth is not that permissible, so maybe we can use the uh, our normal one, which is uh, online submission of project assignment. Maybe we can ask students to make their own video recording first and then upload into YouTube so that and then after that they, he, he or she can um, share the YouTube, then we can do observation from the YouTube. Peer review. Uh, I've done this peer review in uh, Smart 3 UMS that uh, I asked students to do um, workshop. So the students will assess their friends' works and then at the same time also uh, assess the students' uh, work. So this is a good way for students to, to understand what is uh, assessment as learning is. And then maybe we can ask students to do uh, reflective analysis and they can make their own video of analyzi uh, analyzing their reflection of the day or maybe if there is a virtual classroom or simulation maybe the lab uh, <coughs> visual uh, simulation and so on virtual for labs maybe we can ask students to join that kind of uh, environment so that's the theory. So, for example, here I have, um, this is what I have planned for my course. This is a CLO1. So, in my CLO, CLO1, so I want the students to be able to diagnose students learning difficulties in uh, chemistry. So, we have to understand this. This is a, a teaching method course. So, one of the skill or one of the learning outcome for students, teacher student, is to be able to diagnose students' difficulty. So this is these are the topics related to this CLO. So I plan for final exam. We, uh, I distribute three MCQ for each topics, and for the last one, I have one essay question. And my alternative uh, assessment here for the plan assessment. So I ask the students to do the teacher review on what. Uh, alternative concept in chemistry. So each student have their own topics. And for assignment two, uh, I ask them to do some interview protocol and try to diagnose alternative assessment, uh, alternative concept. Uh, and do the interview in among school students. So they have to go to the school and do some interview. This is the original plan. So in this time, maybe for MCO, so what I can do here is to replace the final exam, I make a, a few smaller quizzes. So for this topic one, I have 10 MCQs. For this second one, I have 10 MCQ. One is for a puzzle, one is smart three. And maybe this one, I give them some YouTube, and then my assessment would be 10 MCQ and two short answer items over the Smart 3 uh, platform. So the the online assignment submission will be still the same. So they still can uh, do the literature review on their own and submit the uh, literature review. And oops. Can you still see my presentation? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Is your presentation? Somebody took. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm resuming. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is it okay now? All right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So this the assignment still the same thing here. 
So, but instead of doing interview among the students, the secondary students, I may just ask uh, our, my students to interview each other to detect or to, to diagnose alternative concept among themselves. So this may be a way or example how we can uh, uh, do to improvise what we can not do now, which is it's very difficult to do face-to-face. Uh, -face. So most of this is done using using online uh, means. Okay, so basically for courses with less than 70% SLT as achieved, so maybe for objective tests here, we can replace with other methods here. For example, online tests over Smart2 or Smart3. Maybe we can also use Google Form. But uh, we still use the same uh, instrument here. But we have to adjust from uh, here is still test blueprint. But we have to adjust the test blueprint for, for the alternative methods. And final exam, usually uh, we do assess and so on. For for essays, okay. So maybe we can replace this with uh, online open book if synchronous. We can ask the students and they to do the test uh, directly. Maybe for twenty minutes or thirty minutes per per question. And still the same. We still have to do the test blueprint to make sure that uh, our test is in line with what we intended to to for the students to achieve at the end of the courses okay so that is some maybe guidelines or maybe uh, alternative way to do our assessment <coughs> okay so maybe some of you are going to ask about um uh some issues uh, or some uh you know this uh, uneasy feeling for example here uh, candidates honestly uh, during non face to face test and examination so i think this is a uh, we have to break for away from this kind of uh thinking usually for example here for lower all the thinking skills we also usually use objective test or examination yeah so what you can do is to use few sets of as items and we can randomize the items <coughs> and also we can also randomize the response choice so it's quite impossible for students to uh, do some cheating there <coughs> excuse me uh, for HOTS, maybe we can uh, ask students to do open book <coughs> test, but we don't use a simple question. We use something that uh, um, they need to think what kind of answer. So it's possible for students to to copy answers from their friend. Excuse me. Um, so, how about student internet access? So, we can choose between asynchronous and also asynchronous. So, if it's very poor, maybe we can only use group messaging over WhatsApp or Telegram. Very simple Q&A. <coughs> <laughs> okay, so if the the internet access is about between one to two point five megabyte, maybe we can use online quizzes or online submission. For high, we can have anything. I think we can have live presentation, we can have oral examination, and so on. So. This is some issue that we can look into. 
How about lecture list skill? <coughs> so I think this is time for us to learn more uh, tools. We can explore a lot of tools. There are a lot in the internet. We can just look into a few things. Uh, maybe we can share a lot here. For example, for instructional design, we may look at maybe we can join online courses. Okay, maybe we can you can start with a storyboard. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> right. And then maybe you can create or join learning communities who have more experience on doing the online um, online teaching. If we have difficulties in terms of digital skill, usually we can look from YouTube. Just ask and then we can see a lot of YouTube uh, giving some guidelines to do uh, digital skill. Infrastructure, there's a lot. Too many to mention here, actually. So for me, you don't have to choose everything. You can start with um, few simple tools first, get used to one tool, and then move to another one. So maybe it's, it's time for us to to uh, adventure or to venture out from face to face to more on online teaching. Uh, okay, I think uh, I cover most of the part that I should, Prof. Vincent. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Dennis. The number of participants now is about 100. No? That's very encouraging. In the in the poster for this uh, forum, I mentioned that uh, the driver of dig digital transformation now is COVID-19. So this is very true. Congrats to all for your interest and also your commitment in uh, converting what you're doing to uh, something uh, more suitable at, for this time. Okay, I'd like to summarize that uh, for assessment type, we are looking more at, at formative assessment. We should be moving from assessment of learning to assessment for learning and assessment as learning. And this is very important for access. This appears in most of the guidelines from the ministry. No one should be left out. No one should be should get lower mark because of access. And it's also here. Huh? The final assessment score must not be a function of extent of internet access. The only, the only criteria for measuring is ability, skills, knowledge, and so on, not internet access. And it's very important for us that we have to document all these changes. For example, we make some amendment in table four, and this has to be uh, endorsed by your academic committee in the faculty. Uh, at this time, we also realized that uh, UMS core values are very relevant at this time. For example, our uh, core values are dynamic, sustainability, integrity, justice, happiness. So for dynamics, we have done a lot of digital transformation in teaching and learning and also in assessment. There are many people doing innovative innovation in teaching and learning to solve any delivery issues. For sustainability, we are sustaining the interest, the motivation of in, in learning among our students and also among ourselves. We also want to see minimum interruption of teaching and learning. 
And this is very good. All of us should give ourselves a big pat. We work from home. We do not need supervision. We are doing our work based on love, not uh, supervision. And for justice, no one should be left behind. Assessment score must not be a function of the extent of internet access. And I believe that we're happy, we are very happy learning new skills, especially uh, skills in delivery through various platforms. And if we are good enough, we can actually cre create active, effective engagement between our lecturers and students. And that will not make uh, our relationship less compared to uh, uh, the regular time. Uh, these are some resources which will help us to know more about alternative assessment. Uh, this I have mentioned earlier. Last week, uh, Prof. Auzia of UUM conducted a workshop on this, and this is in, available in YouTube. This book talks about, among other things, uh, alternative assessment. Uh, this is this is a set of slides from the ministry when they begin to introduce alternative assessment and other concepts. And also last week, uh, USM shared their online assessment guidelines for remote teaching. Uh, apart from this, there are a lot of other resources. You just need to Google the right ones. So I believe uh, that that is. Uh, the end of what we are sharing with you, but uh, we hope that some people can share your thoughts, your practices, things that you have done, your innovation during this time. And if there are some questions, we'd be very happy to answer. Uh, you can ask your questions here on your, on your mic and ask, or you can ask your question through the Google Meet chat. Now let's look at the question first in the, in our chat room. Uh, Dennis, you notice any questions, interesting questions? I think it's from the uh, from Rachel. It's about nine fifteen. Table four. Uh, what what time? Nine fifty. Uh, do do I said? Do we need to change table four to suit the schedule that we're doing for this MCO? Because all our methods are changing, and then we have to relook re at SLTs, right? Yes, yes, you have to. You have to change your table for and get it endorsed at the faculty meeting, faculty academic meeting. Okay. Thanks, Prof. Okay, thank ada you. Slide, prof, ada slide, Prof. Share nanti, kan? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. Sorry, saya lambat masuk. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> prof. Yes. Um, can we change the CLO? Cannot, can? No, cannot. Okay, so we change the, um, the assessment, tetapi mesti mengukur the CLO yang sama? Yes. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, all this, what we have shared, are general in nature because we have so many disciplines. So, uh, it may be related to most of the courses, but may not be related to some of the specific courses, huh? Exam for especially those uh, governed by professional bodies. So you have to take note of this. For professional bodies, you have to uh, adhere strictly to the guidelines given by your professional body. And for, for hard science, your requirements may be very different, so you may have to find your alternatives. Uh, there's a question from Dr. Uh, Prof? Yes, yes. 
Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Um. There are, in the guidelines there are certain range of a uh, percentage of assessment can. Yes. Uh. If let's say during this MSCO, can we change that or we are we have to still stick to those guidelines? For example, the exam should be thirty to fifty percent. So if we were to do it lesser than that, are we allowed to? Thank I think you. we have changed it already. I okay. think uh, the minimum is, is zero now. It's allowed, isn't okay, it? Thank you. It's allowed now, yes. According to the MQA, yeah. Yeah. Yes. We can change. Yes. We have also changed the uh, last one. Is it, is uh, the range starts from zero for exam? Um, Prof. Yes. Um, anything on the engineering side, if can go to zero ex final exam? Engineering, I think you better better refer to your professional body. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we will we will ask. Okay. Prof, untuk klarifikasi lagi. As long as yeah. we mengukur the CLO yang ada dalam table 4, we can go to zero again using the alternative assessment. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, there are a lot of uh, good inputs from uh, Prof. Muhammad. So, uh, Dr. Rachel, maybe you can refer to him on, on the EAC. Yes. Yeah, Prof, but the changes only only can be used uh, at this semester, right? And then balik lagi yeah, yeah. for asal for the next yeah. semester yang ana. Untuk okay. emergency saja. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That is for clarification but, juga. <laughs> but if the changes are for better, maybe you can revi can revise it can for future. Can continue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. If, if you find it yes. also more relevant. Right. In fact, okay. we are we are going moving more to authentic assessment. All right. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Uh, there was uh, uh, one who ran, tried to ask the question. One, if there is Tanakan Munkin line, one, if you cannot uh, get through, maybe you can use a chat to ask. Have you asked already? There's a question from Sanakan, but uh, still couldn't get through. Prof. Yes. According to, uh, I remember the EAC made a statement the other day, and Afman and I are talking about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, it stated that um, not necessary examination, but they didn't state the percentage if they allow zero percentage of examination, and they insisted on control controlling the assessment. But when they say control the assessment, would you have any idea what it means? Because I don't. I don't understand what he means or why what they mean by control the assessment. EAC is very detailed in uh, in their work. I think this guy is referred to EAC. Zainal. Yeah. Zainal. That's the solution. Yeah. Have to look for him lah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 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 But in in assessment of uh, subjects, prof. What would you say would be a control of assessment from control, your point of view? Control of assessment? Yeah. It's the basically but, about the activities and also attaining the, the outcomes. The assessment activities and to attain the outcomes. Okay, and okay. at the same time, you have to look into the normal principles. Huh? Reliability, validity, fairness. Okay. Thanks, Prof. Thank you. Uh, there is a question from uh, Chua, Chua Billy yeah. about assessment as learning uh, not he's asking whether uh, we need a rubric and all this um, I think dr. Dennis has one slide on on that not not all assessment types involve marks uh, yeah. some can be qualitative it depends some, on the CLO. yes yes 
some just for feedback, just to help students to improve. Marks may not be involved. Dr. Chua also asked about uh, courses without final exam. Courses without final exam is, is fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's easy to find uh, an, an alternative. Uh, for the information of uh, all, uh, the last revision of our garis panduan pentaksiran, the minimum percentage for for exam has been reduced to zero, so it's possible to have a course without any exam, as long as the outcomes are measured. As long as the CLO are measured and aligned. Yep. Any more question? Prof, I think ada soalan dari dekan APP dalam chat. Um, bolehkah semua khusus data exam? Boleh. As long as CLO was a measure. Uh, thanks, Osman. Uh, like a lot of good inputs, uh, uh, a lot of good, good comments. Uh, okay, we we get some feedback from uh, one Hurani English. Uh, there's no exam in English language, so ongoing semua. That's good. That means not not much to adjust. Um, okay, last question. If any, if there's any. Okay, it looks like uh, we are fine so far. Uh, anyway, this is not the end. We hope to conduct more online forums like this. Uh, maybe next round to share good practices. Uh, we hope that uh, people continue to um, use this media for your daily work even after MCO, you know, we have, all of us have a big uh, uh, learning trajectory recently. So it's good for all. We hope that everybody continue to use this method. Uh, thank you all. Stay safe, stay home. I hope to see you again in other forum. Thanks again. Uh, for your learning. Prof, Prof. Yes. Prof, Prof. I yes. think Mandy made us one, one yes. nice question. How about CLO to measure practical skills, they belong. Practical skills can susah to actually measure in yeah, yeah. Um, uh, online. Okay, practical skills, uh, psychomotor skills is quite difficult to measure online unless you can uh, do video conferencing, uh, focusing on the, uh, the work of doing. That, can, that may be possible. Otherwise, you you just have to wait for the semester to to continue to reopen and and just uh, arrange for the sessions. Yeah. Uh, prof. Yes. Sorry, Prof. Okay. Um, I think we can also do video presentation or uh, try to tape whatever they are doing. Is that possible? Yes. Yes. Thank yes. you, Prof. Yes. Uh, prof. Yes. I was wondering ah. if the MCO, no, not that I'm predicting, but ah. do we have uh, other plans if the MCO still extend? 
pass the time i was will start on 9 of june i think there's plenty of time from now on so the chance of uh, going back to class on the 9 of june is quite good i think yes okay um but we can continue online classes even after then right of course yep. of course i think uh, all of us should continue uh doing what we are good at now uh, this is this is a, a very good thing that we have learned a lot of skills we should continue okay okay i like uh dr hasli i want haslinda's idea psychomoto guna tiktok which is ah, no, no. actually you which is will be very interesting as well that's sort of yeah. also good maybe next section sharing ah okay. what has linda psychomoto ah. guna tiktok okay. <laughs> but lab work would be difficult for vincent yeah yeah, yeah. difficult that's why some of the things we still have to wait for 9 of june Thanks, Juan. Thanks, Orang Sanakan. I noticed there are quite many from Sanakan uh, taking part. I love Juan, but I noticed, I think, a few. Thanks, Aina. Uh, how about social maintaining social distancing while doing the lab work? Can we achieve it? I think that can be achieved, kan? Kalau satu meter. Hey, yeah lah. Lebih pun boleh kan? Dua meter lah. Easily, easily. You just just uh, reduce the number of uh, people working in the lab. Yeah lah. I mean, you can observe from a far distance, kan? Boleh, boleh. Should be a lot, kan? Yeah. <laughs> Sepatutnya lah. Tapi kali kalau terpaksa baru lah, kan? Yeah, yeah. And <coughs> uh, uh, Prof Fong, do you have any announcement for your next uh, program? Prof Fong. Yes, uh, Prof. Vincent. Uh, Prof. Vincent and Dr. Dennis, I would like to say uh, thank you. Very clear uh, briefing and have uh, cleared up many, many doubts. Uh, the coming up uh, next session will be on this uh, Wednesday. It's tomorrow on the Microsoft team uh, by Point Safara. Okay. Uh, otherwise, uh, as mentioned by Rachel just now, uh, uh, or any other that serve contact us or contact uh, Rob Winston, we, we can uh, help to organize this kind of a session. Thank you. Yes, yes, that'll be good. Yes. Just let us know what is good. We can organize something. Maybe uh, Dr. Liu, next next round, we can invite him. Yeah, I think he has done a lot of uh, interesting things. Um, Prof. Vincent, can you repeat what Prof. Fong uh, said? Because we I heard it in small, small parts only. I, I couldn't hear everything he said. The line yeah. wasn't good. Prof. Fong, maybe you, you put in the chat, put in the chat so that people can get it clearly. Okay, once again, uh, uh, this session is just the beginning in UMS. So if uh, any of us feel that there are certain uh, need, they need uh, immediate attention or immediate uh, upgrading or updating uh, to share your experience or knowledge, uh, do contact Provincial, can contact me. We can arrange this kind of a session for you. Thank you.